Hello, and welcome to the Bible with Briscoe. I am your host slash narrator, Shenandoah Briscoe, and today we're going to be covering 2 Samuel 1 through 2 and Luke 14, 1 through 24. Father, I just ask for clarity of voice and the availability to read the word that you provided for us. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Father, I just ask you for the blessing to be able to read your word clearly. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And they all said, amen. David hears of Saul's death. Second Samuel 1. After the death of Saul, David returned from striking down the Amalekites and stayed in Zagalag two days. On the third day, a man arrived from Saul's camp with his clothes torn and dust on his head. When he came to David, he fell to the ground and paid him honor. Where have you come from? David asked him. He answered, I have escaped from the Israelite camp. What happened? David asked. Tell me. The man fled from the battle. The men fled from the battle, he replied. Many of them fell and died, and Saul and his son, Jonathan, are dead. Then David said to the young man who brought him the report, How do you know that Saul and his son Jonathan are dead? I happen to be on Mount Gilbo, the young man said, and there was Saul leaning on his spear with the chariots and their drivers in hot pursuit. Then he turned around and saw me. He called out to me, and I said, What can I do? He asked me, who are you? An Amalite, I said, I answered. Amalekite, kite, I answered. Then he said to me, stand here by me and kill me. I, I'm in the throes of death, but I'm still alive. So I stood beside him and killed him, because I knew that after he had fallen, he could not survive. And I took the crown that was on his head and the band on his arm, and have brought them here to my Lord. Then David and all the men with him took hold of the, their clothes and tore them. They mourned and wept and fasted till evening for Saul and his son Jonathan, and for the army of the Lord and for the nation of Israel, because they had fallen by the sword. David said to the young man who brought him the report, Where are you from? I am the son of a foreigner, an Amalekite, he answered. David asked him, Why weren't you afraid to lift your hand to destroy the Lord's anointed? Then David called one of his men and said, Go strike him down. So he struck him down, and he died. For David had said to him, your blood ha be on your own head. Your own mouth testified against you when you said, I killed the Lord's anointed. David's Laminate for Saul and Jonathan David took out this laminate concerning Saul and his son Jonathan, and he ordered that the people of Judah be taught this laminate of the bow of the bow. It is written in the book of Jasher. A gazelle lies slain on your heights, Israel, how the mighty have fallen. Tell it not to Gath, proclaim it not to the streets of Ashkelon, lest the daughter of the Philistines be glad, lest the daughter of the He's the daughter of the uncircumcised rejoiced. Mountains of Gilboa, may you have neither dew nor rain. May no showers fall on your terraced fields, for there the shed of the the shield of the mighty was despised, for the shield, uh, shield of Saul no longer rubbed with oil. From the blood of the slain, from the flesh of the mighty, the bow of Jonathan did not turn back. The sword of Saul 
did not return unsatisfied. Saul and Jonathan, in life they were loved and admired, and in death they were not parted. They were swifter than eagles, and they were stronger than lions. Daughters of Israel, weep for Saul, who clothed you in scarlet and finery, who adorned your garments with adornments of gold, ornaments of gold. How the mighty have fallen in battle! Jonathan lies slain on your heart, on your heights. I grieve for you, Jonathan, my brother. You were very dear to me. Your love for me was wonderful, more wonderful than that of a woman. How the mighty have fallen, the weapons of war have perished. David, anointed king over Judah. Second Samuel 2 In the course of time, David inquired of the Lord, Shall I go up to one of the towns of Judah, he asked. The Lord said, Go up. David asked, where shall I go? To Hebron, the Lord answered. So David went up there with his two wives, Ahanoli of Jezreel and Abigail, the widow of Nabal of Carmel. David also took the men who, the men who were with him, each with his family, and they settled in Hebron and its towns. Then the men of Judah came to Hebron, and there they anointed David king over the tribe of Judah. When David had, was told that it was the men from Jabesh Gilgad who had buried Saul, he sent messengers to them to say to them, The Lord bless you for showing this kindness to Saul, your master by burying him. May the Lord know may the Lord now show your you kindness and faithfulness, and I too will show you the same favor because you have done this. Now then, be strong and brave, for your soul, your master, is dead, and the people of Judah have anointed me king over them. War between the houses of David and Saul. Meanwhile, Abner, son of Ner, the commander of Saul's army, had Tekish Ishbosheth, son of Saul, and brought him over to Mahanam. Mahanam. He made him king over Gilad, Asher, and Jezreel, and also over Ephraim, Benjamin, and all Israel. Ishbath, son of Saul, was forty years old when he became king over Israel, and he reigned two years. The tribe of Judah, however, remained loyal to David. The length of time David was king in Hebron over Judah was seven years and six months. Abner, son of Ner, together with the men of Ishbathash, son of Saul, left Manahem and went to Gibeon. Job, Joab, son of Zariah, and David's men, went out and met them at the pool of Gibeon. One group sat down on one side of the pool, and the other group on the other side of the pool. Then Abner said to Job, Let's have some of the young men get up and fight hand to hand in front of us. All right. Let them do it, Job said. So they stood up and were counted off twelve men from Benjamin and Ishbah, son of Saul, and twelve for David. Then each man grabbed his opponent by the head and thrust his dagger into his opponent's side, and they fell down together, so that that place in Gibeon was called Helkist. Hazarum. The battle that day was very fierce, and Abner and the Israelites were defeated by David's men. 
The three sons of Zerah were there, Joab, Abishish, and Ashiahel. Now, Ashiahel, Ashiahel was as fleet-footed as a wild gazelle. He chased Abner, turning, turning neither to the right nor to the left as he pursued him. And Abner looked behind him and asked, Is that you, Ashel? It is, he answered. Then Abner said to him, Turn aside to the right or to the left. Take on one of the young men and strip him of his weapons. But Ashel would not stop chasing him. Again Abner warned Ashel, Stop chasing me. Why should I strike you down? How could I look your bro look your brother Joab in the face? But Ashahel refused to give up the pursuit. So Abner thrust the butt of his spear into Ahashel's stomach, and the spear came out through his back. He fell there and died on the spot. And every man stopped when he came to that place where Eshel had fallen and died. But Joab and Abishai pursued Abner, and as the sun was setting, they came to the hill of Amaha, near Ga. On the way to the wasteland of Gibeon, the men of Benjamin relied behind Abner, rallied behind Abner. They formed themselves into a group and took their stand on top of a hill. Abner called out to Joab, Must the sword devour forever? Don't you realize that this is, will end in bitterness? How long before you order your men to stop pursuing their fellow Israelites? Joab answered, As surely as God lives, if you had not spoken, the men would have continued pursuing them until morning. So Joab blew the trumpet, and all the troops came to a halt. They now they no longer pursued Israel, nor did they fight any more. All that night Abner and his men marched through the Abba, and they crossed the Jordan continued through the morning hours, and came to Menahem. Then Joab stopped pursuing Abner, and assembled the whole army beside Ashahel. Nineteen of David's men were found missing, but David's men had killed three hundred and sixty Benjaminites who were with Abner. They took Ashel and buried him in his father's tomb at Bethlehem. Then Joab and his men marched all night and arrived at Hebron by daybreak. That concludes Second Samuel 1 through 2. Now we'll be moving on to Luke 14, 1 through 24. Okay. Jesus at Pharisee's house. At a Pharisee's house. Fourteen one, Luke fourteen one. One Sabbath, when Jesus went to eat in the house of a prominent Pharisee, he was being carefully watched. There, in front of him, was a man suffering from abdominal swelling of his body. Jesus asked the Pharisees and experts in the law, "Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath or not?" But they remained silent. So, taking hold of the man, he healed him and sent him away on his way. Sent him on his way. Then he asked them, If one of you has a child or an ox that falls into a well on the Sabbath day, will you not immediately pull it out? And they had nothing to say. When he noticed how the guests picked the place of honor at the table, he told them this parable. When someone invites you to a wedding feast, do you 
do not take the place of honor, for a person more distinguished than you may have been invited. If so, the host who invited both of you will come and say to you, Give this person your seat. Then, humiliated, you will have to take the least important place. But when you are invited, take the lowest place, so that when your host comes, he will say to you, Friend, move up to a better place. Then you will be honored in the presence of all the other guests, for all Those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. Then Jesus said to his host, When you give a luncheon or dinner, do not invite your friends, your brothers or sisters, your relatives or your rich neighbors. If you do, they may invite you back, and so you will be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, and the lame the blind, and you will be blessed. Although they cannot repay you, you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. The Parable of the Great Banquet When one of those is at the table with him heard this, he said to Jesus, Blessed is the one who will eat at the feast in the kingdom of God. Jesus replied, a certain man was preparing a great banquet and invited many guests. At the time of the banquet, he sent his servant to tell those who had been invited, Come, for everything is now ready. But they all alike being began to make excuses. The first said, I haven't just bought, I have just bought a field and I must go see it. Please excuse me. Another said, I have just bought five yoke of oxen, and I am on my way to try them out. Please excuse me. Still another said, I just got married, so I cannot come. The servant came back and reported to his master that then the owner of the house became angry and ordered his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and alleys of the town and bring in the poor the crippled and the blind and the lame sir the servant said what you ordered me has been done but there is still room then the master told his servant go out to the roads and country lanes and compel them to come in so that my house will be full i tell you not one of those who were invited will get a taste of my banquet that concludes Luke 14, 1 through 24, which also concludes the Bible with Briscoe 2020 for the day. Tomorrow we will be covering 2 Samuel 3 through 5 and Luke 14, 25 through 35. Father, I just thank you that this was a blessing to you and those who have tuned in. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And they all said, amen. Now I'd like to just say thank you for tuning in to the Bible with Briscoe 2020. This here has been your host, Shenandoah Briscoe. And as always, you know, God loves you and so do I. So come back and see me tomorrow because, well, hey, I'll be here and I hope that you are too.